No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends, rather a curious little gin on the show. For have a look, casteth your eyes upon this because it's called Peaky Blinders Gin. Now, to be honest, we've had a novelty gin on the show before named after a TV show. It was the Downton Abbey Gin and Really, I can't see the point in it. What I, I don't really see what, why people are sort of slapping the branding from a TV show on a bottle of gin. But uh, I'm sure some people are going to be buying it because it's a very popular TV show. So we're going to have a look into it nonetheless, my friends. But for those of you who haven't seen the show, much like myself until last night, I watched it last night as a sort of a, a bit of research for the show. And I always thought they were Cockney, like London accents. But no, I was bang wrong. They are Birmingham accents or Brummies, as we affectionately call them here. So that gives me an excellent opportunity not only to do my Birmingham, Bur Bur Birmingham, oh God, my Birmingham accent, but also I do have a little flat cap which I've used before so I'm very happy for the opportunity to use it again so here we go my friends let's see what they say about it on the old website Ash Halway. Sadler's Peaky Blinder Spice Gin features the infamous character of Thomas Gilbert who later became known as Kevin Mooney who was considered to be one if not the most prominent member of the Peaky Blinder gang you might recognize him now as I said I've only seen one episode of the show but I think I recognise this guy, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised they don't use the main character played by Killian Murphy, but I, then again I suppose he probably charged a fortune, this guy was probably a bit cheaper. In England's black country, the Sadler family have been purveyors of the finest beers and spirits since 1861. Over a century's worth of knowledge and passion has been led by the family to create this bold, small batch, handcrafted spice gin, blended with exotic spices and botanicals. The gin has notes of warm spiced orange with a juniper twist and a candid sweetness on the palate with a gentle and well-balanced finish. All right, Bab. Turn on a bit. Look at the state of his fizzog. Okay, so we can see the connection now between Peaky Blinders and this gym because Sadler's the company that makes it is based in the black country, as you heard there, which is in Birmingham. And that's obviously where Peaky Blinders is set. So my friends, I think we know quite enough about this gin so far. I think it's time we cracked the fellow open. And as the more keener eyed among you may have noticed, we do have a cork. So we know what that means. It's going to be the very first bloody Birmingham cork test. The bloody Birmingham cork test. So, do we have a squeak? Now squeak it all. Absolutely bloody silent. Go for the full pull. Oh, not so bad. It's kind of a sort of a half arse pull, I'd imagine. But I've certainly seen or heard worse. So then, into the glass it goes, my friends. Ho, 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 ho. Hello there, I didn't even have time to get into the glass, let it was leaping up my nostrils because I tell you what, that was like a, sometimes you take the, the bot, the bot, the bot, oh god, you take the top off the bottle and it literally, it's like a genie, it just can't wait to get out, it's like poof and straight up the nostrils and just sort of tickling them rather lightly but tantalizingly all the same. I don't know why I was so amused by that bit, but let's give it a proper sniff, hang on. Oh, wow. It did say a spicy gin, and that's exactly what I'm getting. Spice, 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 but kind of spice in a sort of mixed with a sort of a, a sort of an, I was going to say oranginess. It is a kind of an oranginess, but it's almost kind of a more, almost sort of a tropicaliness about it. I did not expect that. I don't, th I don't think anyone could describe the black country as tropical. We haven't got much in there, have we? Let's pop a little bit more in there and marry it up with the tonic, my friend. So here we go. Tonic off in you get in there my friend a little bit to release the flavors and i say to my friends up in birmingham the very first ever birmingham that's not the first ever Birmingham because we did have uh the black lodge potions they were from birmingham but anyway the very first ever it's, it's just peaky blinders gin here we go cheers <laughs> i tell you what Gin lovers, I that do, do you know what? I was all fully prepared to not like this. You know, I you know we tried that Downton Abbey one. I didn't like it. I thought it was kind of like nah, you know something and nothing. They were just cashing in on the Downton Abbey name. However, my friends, I I thought this was going to be on the same sort of vein because I didn't I don't really see the point as I said before in putting these sort of TV shows with gins. But that I've not heard of Sadlers before, but. 
not half bad. It kind of sizzles a little bit on the tongue. As it sort of graces the threshold of your lips, it kind of a little, like a little bit, almost like electricity, a sort of uh, spitting and sparkling. But imagine those spits and sparkles as kind of sort of, almost a sort of an orangey flavor, but with just like a sprinkle of spiciness in there as well. Just very, very delicately, not overpowering, because spiciness in gins can go a bit too far. But as that sort of pop and crackle sort of subsides, it sort of just flows around and under the tongue in a kind of a sort of a, a relaxing kind of orangey way. But as I say, something a little bit sort of more depth of it than orange. As I say bordering, bordering on kind of Ah, oh, I want to say something like sort of almost sort of tropical sort of pineapple sort of flavor. I don't know if that in, that botanic is in there, but that's the kind of vibe I'm getting. It's going to be in the realm of the classic gins. You know, your beef eater, your standard beef eaters, your brokers, your tankeries, and your Plymouths. It's in that definitely in that sort of vein. But you know what? I think it could definitely hold its own against them. It's kind of it's got everything they've got, but I would. You know, I'd almost say it's, a, they push, it's pushing it a little bit higher in terms of intenseness of flavours and depths of the flavours as well. And what's particularly interesting is it's actually a little bit on the weak side. It's only 40% volume. So I was expecting it to be a little bit lacklustre when I saw that. But do you know what? I never would have known that. I never, if you hadn't told me, I, I, to me it tasted kind of... <sighs> Not not super strong, but certainly what you know, so sort it of didn't taste weak. And let's face it, you don't always want you know super strong blow your head off gin. You might be you know sometimes it might be a work night. You know you might be you might be at work. You know operating heavy machinery. <laughs> Just to clarify before the complaints come in, that was a joke. But I think you know what I mean. Sometimes it's nice to have the option of something a little bit weaker. Like we did an Australian gym, which was Kalki Moon, which was down to like 37%, I think. Very, very weak. But again, sometimes it's nice to have that option. So then, gin lovers, you're probably thinking to yourself now, this is one of those novelty ones. You know, this is cashing in because, you know, Peaky Blinders is a very, very popular show that you're going to be paying through the nose for this thing. It's going to be really expensive. Well, my friends, I can tell you now, you are bang wrong. Because this little chap was a very meagre 20 pounds, which works out at 27 dollars or 22 euros. And as we know on this show, I don't mind, you know, usually my top bracket is 30, but for small distilleries it goes up to 40. That is way down there, way, way down there. Almost as cheap as the old beef eater over that. It's about sort of 16 pounds. But I tell you what. I tell you what, this is not sort of a gin that's widely available anywhere. You know, you won't see this in the supermarket. I haven't seen it anyway. But um, it's, I think it should be. I think it should be. I think it probably won't get the credit it deserves, really, when people see this sort of novelty uh, branding on it. But I tell you what, if you see it, give it a go, because it's, it's a damn brilliant gin that's very easy to hold its own against the others. In fact, might even be a little bit better. So then, gin lovers, what another surprise event? We never know where it's going to go on this show, do we? I, I always have a preconception in my mind. I'm almost always wrong. But for this, uh, this uh, particular one, I was wrong in a pleasing direction because I was uh, expecting it to be bad. And it was actually awesome. And I think that the fact that it's kind of a sort of a novelty gin with this sort of, you know, sort of a movie branding on it or TV show branding on it might sort of make people sort of overlook it because they do loads of other versions of it as well. Peaky Blinder range. You've got spiced rum. You've got black spiced rum, you've got Irish whiskey, blended Irish whiskey, and bourbon whiskey as well. So there's a whole range of Peaky Blinders gins. So if you see them, don't be fooled by the sort of novelty sort of facade on there, because actually, if this is ever to go by, they're going to be bloody brilliant. And I say to the people at the Saddler's Distillery, cape up the bloody good work. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. And as always, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my show, press the little like button, and indeed the bell icon so you get notified when all my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show, head over to my Patreon page or click the join button below this video. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my Patrons and members and keep drinking the gin.